In the middle of all of this beauty is the Rich Lone General Store. It's a 1920s era general store that is located in what was once a busy depot for the railroad. Complete with the local post office located just inside the store entrance that still sits the same as it did back in the day. We were fortunate to get an interview with the store's merchant, the mother of the man responsible for the store's resurrection. Yes, ma'am. Anytime right. you are. This is an original 1928 building. My husband's uncle, Sid Brinson, built the building. And at the time, it served as the post office, the general store, and the train depot. And it served until 1936 when um, Webster took over the route and mail and made it rule. And my son, which is the youngest of, the, of our five children, got the property and in 2016 he restored and reopened it and in 20 in October of 2017 he actually got on the National Historical List. This place is very beautiful. It's, it's some of the things I'm going to include a bunch of pictures with it but some of the things that I've seen in here I haven't seen since I was a child. As I say this yeah. is all original but the metal is all original we kept it all original the original hand painted sign above the post office we've yeah. done the original fireplace then we have the period friendly signs out front that were right. just it, it's beautiful so you guys did an excellent job I've seen a lot of old one of the old places to make it look like it might be period friendly, but this is as close to period friendly as I've found. I see. This is true because we didn't change anything. All we did was just restore it. There you go. And all the stuff we found in the building, like all the stuff along the top of the shelf over there, we uh, that was all true to the building. Even the price tag is true to the building. <laughs> so, but at one time, this was a very large community. Over a hundred people lived out here. And, that's amazing. And I heard you say something about the railroad track. Yeah, there. one time the yeah the railroad came through. It went from Atlanta. It was Atlanta Coast Line, and then it went from Stanford to St. Pete. And um, this was the train depot, and for they shipped their turpentine from here, and they logged the cyp the uh, cedar trees, and sent them over to I mean the cypress trees, and sent them over to Cedar Key. Right. For making pencils. <laughs> wow. And this was a very large a farming community. Yes. Yeah, I and noticed that. The guy that was named Rich Long, Long for Soul, Rich Soul. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Rich Long. Yeah, we, uh, I will be including a bunch of the video that I have surrounded. We're camping at one of the local camp areas right okay. now. Okay. And, uh, and we want to show everybody the beauty that surrounds this store and how this store to me looks like almost the heartbeat of what sur it's surrounded by. Yep, it, it served as the hub for the community at one time and this out here is beautiful walking trails. Oh absolutely, except for I don't get to partake very, very much right. but I have a drone that has that I could get video of the right. walking trails and be able to show that off. But, uh, <laughs> all the way down to the wooden keg. Uh, this yep. is <laughs> and the singer sewing machine. Is that a singer? Yeah, that's a 1915 treadle singer sewing machine. My grandma's got one almost just like that in her house. Well, yeah. she passed away years ago, but it's still there. Yeah, we still use it every day. I sew on it. 
apple smoke marinade for the venison? No, that sounds really, really good. Telling you. Really good. Alright. Five dollars. <laughs> 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 